and Berg's law. And Berg introduced another law for magnetic field, but in this case, he start from the magnetic field to find the current. Biosavar law. Biosavar start from the current to find the magnetic field. But in the case of Ampere, Ampere starts from the magnetic field. So Ampere's law states that the line integral of the magnetic field about any closed path is exactly equal to the direct current enclosed by the path. So if we have any magnetic field and we integrate this magnetic field over a closed bus. This closed bus can be a circular bus, square bus, any arbitrary bus, it doesn't matter, but it should be closed. So as long as it is closed, so the integration of the magnetic field over the closed bus equals the magnitude of the current passing through this bus. So the integration of HDL over closed bus equals the current passing through this bus. We can apply Ampere's law for the same problem of an infinite current line. So if we have an infinite current line and we are assuming that we have magnetic field in phi direction and we are going to integrate this magnetic field in the phi direction on a closed circular bus around this infinite line. So in this case, we say that the magnetic field which we are interested in is the magnetic field in the phi direction. So the incremental length of the bus would be in the phi direction. So it would be rho d phi and to be closed bus would be from 0 to y to 2 pi such that we have a complete circuit around the current. And as long as we are assuming that the magnetic field is constant here and the radius is constant, so they can be obtained outside the integration. So the integration would be from 0 to 2 by d5, or in other words, it is 2 by rho multiplied by h5 equals the current enclosed by this closed bus. The current closed by this closed bus is the current in the filament current, is R. So, H5 is simply I over 2 by rho, which is the same result which we have obtained from Biosavar law, with much, much simpler uh, form. So, this is a magnetic field of an infinite line charge obtained by Ampere's law. And it's the same result for the magnetic field obtained from Biosavar. But effectively, the situation would be quite complicated if you want to apply Biosavar law for a complex geometry like coaxial structure, like this structure. In this structure, we have a current I passing through the inner conductor and because it is complete circuit, so after the load, it passes to the outer shell to be minus R. So, in this case, if we are interested to find out the magnetic field at everywhere inside this coaxial configuration, using Biosavar law it would be quite complicated, but using a bird's law it would be very simple. Assume that we are going to find out the magnetic field in the region between the inner and the outer conductor. So at a radius rho greater than A and this than B and if we have a closed bus, circular closed bus or we call Amberian bus like Gaussian surface for example so if we have a closed bus and this closed bus circular bus because of the symmetry of the problem and we have magnetic field h5 so h5 multiplied by 2 by rho would equal the current in, inside and the current inside here it would be the total current r so the magnetic field at any rho 
such that rho is greater than a and less than b it would be i over 2 by rho okay the question now is what will be the situation if I'm interested to find out the magnetic field inside the conductor? Effectively, inside the conductor, not the total current passing through the conductor, but partial of the current passing through a, a finite section. So, inside the conductor, if you are assuming that we have a radius rho which is less than a, so the current included inside this radius row would be the current density multiplied by the surface area of the radius row. So the current in the radius row would be proportional to rho squared over a squared, such that if the radius row extend to be a, so the total current would be included. And if the radius row would be zero, there is no current would be along the axis. So the current included inside a radius row of this cross section area of the inner conductor would be the total current multiplied by rho squared over a squared. And the closed bus here it would be 2 by rho. So the magnetic field H5 multiplied by 2 by rho would equal the enclosed current which is i multiplied by rho squared over a squared so in other words we can say the magnetic field inside the inner conductor at a radius rho where rho is less than a would equal this rho would be eliminated with the square and we have this 2 by so h5 would be i rho over 2 by a squared and it can be noted that in this case the magnetic field is proportional to rho. In the previous case it was proportional to 1 over rho. Alright. Okay. Now, what will be the situation if we are interested to find the magnetic field in the outer shell? Assuming that the outer shell extends from radius B to radius C. And this outer shell actually includes a current minus I. So, if I have a radius which is greater than B and less than C, I have to get a shell from the outer conductor and to calculate the current passing through this shell. And it should be noted that this current is negative with respect to the current inside the inner conductor so the total current enclosed in this case would be I the current on the inner conductor minus the current on the shell and the current on the shell in this case it can be proved that is I multiplied by rho squared minus p squared over c squared minus p squared where B is the inner radius of the outer shell and C is the outer radius of the outer shell. Such that if rho equals B um, on the edge of the outer conductor, so I didn't catch any part of the current in the outer shell. So this term would be zero. If rho equals C, the limit I have taken all the outer shell so in this case I am taking all the current on the outer shell which is opposite to the inner current okay so in this case the magnetic field at a radius rho where rho is greater than B and less than C multiplied by H5 equals I minus I multiplied by rho squared minus b squared over c squared minus b squared. Or in other words, we can say that h5 would equal i over 2 by rho multiplied by 
c squared minus whole squared over c squared minus p squared. I have taken the denominator to be common. So this is c squared minus p squared minus rho squared minus p squared. So minus p minus minus p could be zero. So it is c squared minus rho squared over c squared minus p squared. Okay. Now by taking the limit, if rho equals b, so I'm talking about i over 2 by rho. By setting b rho equal b, c minus b squared, c minus b squared. So this would be unity. This would be i over 2 by rho, and rho here is b. If rho is c, it means that, or greater than c, means that I'm including positive i and negative i. So the total current in this case, in the total enclosed current in this case would be zero. So the magnetic field would be zero. So at radius c or greater than c, so c squared minus c squared, it would be zero. So the magnetic field here would be zero. Now, if we are collecting these pieces together, we say that the magnetic field for rho less than a equals i multiplied by rho over 2 by a squared. For rho greater than a and less than b, the magnetic field would be i over 2 by rho. If rho is greater than b and less than c, the magnetic field would be i over 2 by rho multiplied by c squared minus rho squared over c squared minus p squared. If rho is greater than c, then the magnetic field would be c. And in all cases, the magnetic field in the phi direction. Let us draw this. That's what we are seeing. In the range from 0 to A, the magnetic field is proportional to rho. In the range from A to B, the magnetic field is inversely proportional to rho. In the range from B to C, the magnetic field is inversely proportional to rho and it has sharper uh, degrees or sharper slope. Mesh, okay? All right, and the magnetic field at rho equal zero is zero, and the magnetic field for rho greater than c or equal c is zero. Okay. All right.